So let me guess, you've got some leftover turkey. Yeah, me too. And I've already made a tetrazzini and a dang tasty turkey pot pie. So I'm thinking this time, I'm gonna make turkey noodle soup. But I'm not gonna do it just any old way, I'm gonna do it shaker style. Extra creamy and crazy delicious. We're gonna start off by knocking out some prep. Sound good? Let's cook. All right, my comies, I have one and a half cups of chicken stock that I'm adding to a small to medium sized sauce pot. I've got a great homemade recipe if you wanna check that out. Next, three tablespoons of dry vermouth, if all you have is extra dry, no problem. Then six tablespoons of unsalted butter. Remember, always unsalted because you control the sodium content, not a butter company. We're next going over to the cooktop, turning the heat on to high. I'm just gonna whisk it to help melt the butter and incorporate it a little bit quicker. And then we are gonna take the time to reduce this down until there is about a third to a half cup left. This takes roughly 10 to 11 minutes. It should become like a thick gravy and have this exact consistency. I'm then removing it from the heat, taking it over to my cooktop, and then I'm going to whisk in one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. You could substitute with half and half, but cream equals more fat and more flavor. So I do know for a fact shaker noodle soup is a thing because well, I made it back in culinary school and if you search for it, you can see that it exists. But you will be hard pressed to find out what makes something shaker style. I do know after doing a lot of research, shakers would make food that was very nutritious, incredibly fresh. They also used a lot of butters, creams, and fresh herbs. Now we are gonna use a lot of those things in this turkey noodle soup, hence making it shaker style. All right, we're gonna set this to the side and get started on our noodles. And when it comes to egg noodles, absolutely any kind will work. It does not matter the shape or size. I'm going with old fashioned wide here. I'm taking them over to the cooktop. I have a large pot of boiling water. I'm going to season it up so that it's as salty as the ocean so that those flavors can incorporate into the pasta. Next, I'm going to pour it in there. And then I like to move egg noodles around immediately with a rubber spatula because they always want to stick. Now this says to cook for 12 to 15 minutes and I'm gonna actually cook these a little bit less than that. I want them less than al dente. I'll explain why later. And if you have to, because you don't have a lot of experience with this, just try one of the noodles, no problem. We're going to drain them well, then we're immediately going over to my sink. I want to cool these down as quickly as I can with cold water, which only takes maybe 30 to 45 seconds. No need for ice cubes. Once they are cooled down completely, we're going back over to my countertop. Now you can use any container. I love these little plastic storage bags. I'm gonna pour all my, I'm gonna pour all my cooked noodles in here. Then I'm gonna drizzle on a little bit of olive oil. You could use avocado oil, any oil honestly will work well. Then I'm going to massage it in and this is going to help ensure that my noodles do not stick to one another. So yes, classically, these noodles would be cooked right in the soup, which would also help thicken it up a little bit. Here's the problem I have with that. I like to eat soup all day long. I like a big pot on the stove and I can go get it when I want. The issue is by the end of the day, the soup is like gruel or cream of wheat because the noodles and pasta have cooked down to mush. I hate that. So this is what we used to do in the restaurant industry. Pre-cook them, oil them up, and then when we serve an individual bowl, we add some of that perfectly cooked al dente pasta or noodles right to the soup and it's incredible. However, if you plan to serve this right away and everyone plans to eat it right away, just put it in with the soup, no problem. You can set the noodles to the side or even in the refrigerator. Next, I have a large yellow onion. You could use a white or a sweet. Slicing off the end, slicing it in half, removing the outside peel, and then small to medium size, dicing them. Let's take them over to a cooktop where I have a seven quart rondo. You could absolutely use a regular pot or even a Dutch oven here. Then I'm going to add in two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Once it is melted, I'm going to add in my onions. Now we are gonna cook these for about 15 to 20 minutes on low heat. I do not want a caramelization on these. There's no need, it's not that kind of soup, but I do want them to be translucent and tender. So while these are cooking down, we can get started on some more prep. I have four large carrots. You can either scrub them down real well or give them a quick peel, then to slice them. On the skinnier end, I like to go a little bit thicker. And as I get down to the bigger end, I start slicing them thinner. This is so that they cook evenly in the end. Next, I have three large ribs of celery. Same thing, slicing a little bit thicker at the thinner end and then starting to slice thinner as we get to the thicker end. And don't forget to go back and check on your onions in between prepping these, maybe every five to six minutes to ensure nothing is overly caramelizing or sticking. These look fantastic. Back over to prep. 
I've got four garlic cloves, a quick smash, and a fine mince. Set those to the side, and then any vegetable scraps you have, you know what to do with it. In the freezer until I have enough to use it for stock. And now for the turkey. It doesn't matter if you have thigh, drum, wing, or breast meat. All of it will work here. I happen to have a little bit of thigh and breast meat. I'm going to medium to large size dice this up, and in the end, you should have about four cups of packed, cut up turkey. And it's okay if you have an extra cup or even our minus a cup, use what you have. It's still going to work perfectly. Let's go back over to our onions. They look fantastic, translucent, definitely tender, and they smell awesome. Now let's add in our carrots and celery. We're going to turn the heat from low up to low medium, maybe even closer to medium. Let's give it a quick seasoning of salt just to help draw out some of the moisture, maybe just a half teaspoon here. We are going to cook these for just three to four minutes, start to soften them up. Then at this stage, we're adding in our garlic. This is only going to cook for 30 to 45 seconds, or like I always tell you, just until fragrant, because that's when garlic's done cooking. Now at this stage, I'm going to add in all my turkey, a little bit jammed up in there, all right, got it all out, perfect. Next, I'm adding in 10 cups of good chicken stock. Again, I've got a great recipe. Other substitutes are vegetable stock, brodo, or even water will work if that's all you have. I'm going to give everything a quick mix, then crank the heat up to high to bring it to a boil. This should only take maybe 10 to 12 minutes to get it to that boil, nothing longer. Once it's there, heat down to low. You wanna bring it down to a simmer and cook it for seven to eight minutes or just until the vegetables are tender. In the meantime, we're gonna make a thickening agent that I used to use at one of the restaurants. I've got one and a half cups of cold water. I'm going to whisk in three quarter cups of all purpose flour and vigorously whisk until it is completely smooth and no lumps are in there. Now to help sort of activate this, we're gonna take it back over to our cooktop and I'm gonna add in maybe a half cup of the stock. It's okay if some of the vegetables creep in there, no worries. Then slowly stir in this mixture into the soup. Make sure not to boil it because it can break. We wanna keep it at that low to low medium temperature. Once it's in there, you'll immediately see that the viscosity of the liquid changes. It's not thin like a normal broth and it's not super thick like a chowder. It's like a very thin gravy, but it's just enough to barely coat the spoon. This looks excellent. Now let's grab our butter vermouth and stock mixture that we cooked down and pour that in there. We're gonna cream up this turkey noodle soup even more. This looks seriously amazing. Now I've got a few surprises for you. I'm adding in one 15 ounce can drained of hominy. Next, I have one cup of peas, then a quarter cup of finely minced Italian flat leaf parsley. Of course, curly parsley is fine. Then I'm going to season it up with coarse salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Let's stir everything together. It looks awesome. It smells even better. I cannot wait to get into this. And one of the things that I do love about this soup is just how versatile it is. If you happen to be making this after a holiday and have some leftover roasted root vegetables, parsnips, turnips, potatoes, whatever, you can add those in here at the same time that I add the hominy and peas. Again, they're already pre-cooked. They just need to be heated up but we'll still go back to these fundamental classic cooking techniques. They just make better food when you put them into practice and learn them. And then ultimately they make the best memories. I mean, that is why we do this. We get people around the table. We want to see them smile. So we make great food. That's how great conversations are started. It always is. All right, let me show you how I plate this up. I'm first adding in my perfectly cooked al dente noodles right to the bottom of the bowl that I'm serving it in. Next, I'm adding in several ladles of my creamy shaker style turkey noodle soup. Oh, so, so good there. Then I'm gonna garnish with a little bit more finely minced parsley. You could also finish with minced fresh thyme if you want as well. And honestly, some of my fondest memories are eating really good food around the table with my parents and my sister, just sharing what happened throughout the day laughing, just doing life with the people I love. Now I'm trying to recreate that with my own family, and I can tell you what, I'm already in love with these moments. I hope you get a chance to share this meal with the people you love as well. This is what you do with leftover turkey. So comforting, so delicious. I really think you and your family are gonna dig this one. Now I've long said soup was my first love. So if you're a fanatic like me, you have to check out my creamy potato soup with bacon. Oh, it's one of my most popular recipes on my website and on YouTube. I've got a great video. I'll see you on there.